All right, so let's check this setup right here. Um, this is the Blackmagic 4K, Pocket 4K, BMPPP, uh, how, do, how do you say? Blackmagic Black Pocket 4K. <laughs> BMP 4K, yep. uh, right here on the Ziyun Crane 2. So who are you? I'm Raj Sharma, I am the Ziyun Australian Ambassador. And uh, you've been using the Blackmagic 4K for a little while. Yes, um, I've been beta testing for the last couple of weeks, um, and glad to say it's an amazing camera. And it's a perfect mix with the Zhiyun uh, Crane 2? Yes, correct. It's a perfect mix. Um, the weight load is great. The advantage is the screen size. I love the screen size of the Pocket 4K. You don't really need a monitor anymore. Um, most of the time, it's right in front of you. It's a huge screen. It's it great. is huge and beautiful. So how, you actually telling me that the autofocus is reliable? Well, it's touch to focus. It is not a continuous focus. Um, I have used at events and I have tried at dramatic situations where the light keeps on changing. And when you touch on the screen, it does focus on onto the person. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's not a continuous follow focus, but it is a touch to focus. Is there any chance that Zhiyun might maybe their app, where you could maybe touch to focus on their external phone? Unknown at the moment. Potentially. Potentially. Maybe. Maybe. But right now, you, you can show me here. Let's say um, you tap right there. So you tap on that huge screen, and then you you do the gimbaling around it because it doesn't have a built-in IBIS. No. So it's very important to have a gimbal with this it's with this very camera. Smooth. Right? Let's walk. I'll show you. Yeah. So even if we go to the lock mode, move it around, it won't move. No matter what we do, it won't move. So it has a, a good weight distribution, everything for that. Any yeah. kind of. How about the wee bill? Will be a great match also. Um, we bill depending on how we set up the camera onto it. I believe it can go into it, but the Crane Two is a preferred option at the moment, or the Crane Three Lab. Uh, one thing that I'm wondering is uh, if you add like a shotgun mic, like the one I have right now. Yep. Is it gonna be fine on these kind of gimbals? Um, look, I would say use the internal mics first, they're really good. Um, you can record as a stereo, so this could be the left, this could be the right. Ah, this um, is mics? Yes, there's mics in front. Really good built-in mics? Yep, good But mics. they don't do a shotgun style, right? Um, look, it's directional, so it's not getting my voice, it's getting the voices in front of it, so it's nice. Nice. But if you did have external mics, would it uh, put the whole thing out of balance or no? Um, no, I won't say so. You can. I've actually tried to put a road mic onto it, it works, it's usually quarter thread. Um, it works. Or the other option is you can actually get cages. I know I've seen eight cents cage. I've seen small riggers making some. Um, just put the cage on and complete the kit. So you have some samples, right, on YouTube? Um, yes. Yes. So I've where do people have to search to find you? Um, just type in black magic sample footages, and I'm the first two on top. Nice. You did one in low light. Yep, I've done one in low light. I've shot it in Sydney, Australia. Um, we've done a sunrise shoot. Um, I, I I really want to call it silhouette and sunrise um, because it's S and S. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of silhouettes in there, there's a lot of sunrise shots in there. It's low light. I shot the entire thing in ISO 3200. Um, and the footage looks amazing. And then I've also tried to put this camera onto, onto the Zeiss standard Mark II lenses with a PL mount converter. And it works really well as well. So, do you use this lens? Um, I use this lens frequently. As, um, yes. It's, it's just a great, great option. Um, it's perfect for handle as well because it's got internal stabilizer on the lens, so it helps with the camera. This is a, a 2.8 constant aperture. Yes, 2.8, 12 to 35. The Leica, right? Uh, this is Lumix. Lumix, Lumix lens. Yep. And um, so, it's a very exciting camera for not just Look, for Australia a, but for the whole world. It's an exciting camera because the image matches a lot with the SM Mini Pro. I know there is a new image. There's a new profile into this. Um, a new profile, what? How can I say? Um, a, the proper term will be the image quality on this matches closer to some high-end um, cinema cameras, which I've actually seen, and that's all I can say at this stage. Um, but I do know whatever quality that you're going to see with the image profile into this, the same color rendition will soon be available into um, the S Mini Pro. How do you change the formats? You can change the format by going to menu, go to record, you can do raw. There's lossless, 3x1 or 4x1 compression. You can leave it on lossless. I love shooting in RAW because RAW lossless at 4K provides more footage than ProRes HQ at 4K. Uh, there's also H.264? No, there's only ProRes and RAW. 
ProRes and RAW. Correct. He can also shoot ProRes at proxy, LT422 or HQ. So no H264 or H265? Nope. Just, uh, no, it's direct ProRes. Only Pro the Pro stuff. It's, for, it's only for the Pro it's stuff. It's for the post-production people that yep. do uh, stuff. And, and like I the suppose people. that's the reason why there's no IBIS onto it. You know, it's meant for cinema market, and I suppose it's a really good camera for anyone who's using SM Mini Pro already as a B camera. So, uh, what's your relation uh, with GU? Um, I'm the Australian ambassador for Zune Tech. The which one? Australian ambassador. Australian ambassador. Yes. So I think, you know, uh, as an Australian ambassador, uh, maybe you can organize to have a bundle uh, of this nice black magic uh -huh. together with the Zune. Maybe. It's the perfect bundle, right? Maybe, yeah, definitely. All right.